What are the primary ethical considerations for authors of scientific articles? Well, of course, it needs to be original research, and it shouldn't have been published anywhere else, and it should be your own, and everybody who made a significant contribution to the work should be an author, and those who made smaller contributions to the work should be acknowledged. I think the most important thing in writing the article, of course, is always the, um, the question of attributing proper um, uh, attributing the literature properly, so giving credit to people who have done work previously. This is very important in terms of um, citing the correct papers and being careful to, um, to give credit where credit is due. And then um, ethically, another responsibility I think that the author always has is to make sure that the uh, people that they are suggesting to be reviewers don't have any conflicts of interest with them, that is that they've never co-published, that they're not close collaborators. Um, I think that it's important to the peer review process to make sure that there are no conflicts of interest. So I think it is an ethical consideration for the author to ensure that the people they're suggesting should be um, reviewers indeed have no conflicts of interest with them. One thing that's very important is to make sure that every author has seen the version of the paper that's submitted. Uh, some journals, including ours, check once a paper is submitted by sending a note uh, to all the authors to make sure they've agreed with the submission. But we do find occasionally that even senior authors have, are unaware that a uh, paper's been submitted, and we don't allow that. What are the penalties for ethics violations by authors? The result can be uh, banning uh, authors from submission for a number of years and contacting their uh, administrators as well. When many people contribute in some way to an article, who should be listed as an author? So the, I only ask a couple of simple questions when I'm thinking about who should be on a paper. Um, the, the most important question is, um, would this manuscript have come to fruition if not for the contribution of this person. So, in other words, did that person make an important intellectual contribution to that paper? So that distinguishes a lot of um, things from one another. So for instance, if someone merely gave material that was used for that particular manuscript, um, then I would say that that person does not need to be an author on the manuscript. They simply provided materials. They could be acknowledged um, in some other way during the in the manuscript. Um, secondly, you, if you are, if the person has made an intellectual contribution, that could be at the level of designing the experiments rather than actually performing them. It could also be at the level of writing the manuscript. That is, if the person made a rather small contribution to the actual experimentation, but they wrote a significant piece of the manuscript, which was important for the intellectual content of the manuscript, then that person should definitely be included in the manuscript. I think a couple of the gray areas that have come up in the past, which are important to consider, are the area where a technician from a laboratory has worked on, a, on the manuscript. And again, I go back to the idea there of the um, intellectual contribution. If, the, if any person simply carries out a written out you know, set of experiments or a delineated set of experiments, that person is not really intellectually contributing to that manuscript. However, if that person was doing the work independently, was helping to design the experiments, was troubleshooting on the fly things that came up during the experimentation, then that person's made a significant contribution and probably the author should consider uh, putting that person on the manuscript. Um, and I would err there on the side of generosity. Um, then secondly, it has come up when a particular apparatus was um, made by someone, you know, and then used in the um, experimentation, you know, should that be included, should that person's name who um, put together that apparatus, should they be on the manuscript? And I think that one um, thing that's important to think about there is if that um, 
if that piece of equipment or apparatus or invention has been described elsewhere, then that description should merely be cited. And it doesn't need, that person does not need to be an author on the new manuscript. However, if um, that, that um, author has been important in um, uh, either carrying out the experimentation on the new equipment, in modifying the new equipment to accommodate that set of experiments, then I think that that's again falls into the area of an intellectual contribution and they should be included on the manuscript. So I think those are the, the two areas that, that I get the most questions about. What do you see as the most common ethical problems? I would say that we don't really often run into outright fraud, but we do run into cases of plagiarism from time to time. Probably the, the next most common thing is authors who may not have English as a first language who end up taking sentences from other people's papers and don't realize that that's really not an acceptable thing either. Um, and it's quite understandable when it's not your first language that you really want to get some help and ideas from other people who may speak it more fluently. But And the places you most commonly see this are abstracts and introductions and sometimes conclusions when you're talking about more general things. And typically the, the specific things that those authors did that's in the rest of the paper, that's usually in their own language. And so sometimes these things stand out as well. Um, I think that a very common problem is self-plagiarism, that is um, following much too closely um, or identically to work that the author themselves has um, published previously. So um, very, you know, infrequently um, we do find cases of self-plagiarism. Um, either the reviewers will pick it up um, during the review process. Um, or you know the editor will pick it up and basically this is a problem because the journal who published the work previously has copyright for those that exact wording and so self plagiarism is probably something that not um, as many people are extremely careful about but that's a, a very serious consideration so one of one of the most common instances of plagiarism is authors reusing their own work from other publications and they don't realize that that's not an acceptable thing to do. So if you have a, for instance, if you've written a communication on a particular topic or a, a short letter or something like that and you have figures or text and then it comes time that you've done a more thorough study and you're writing a full paper, you can't just reuse those figures in the full paper without getting the permission to do it and you can't reuse your own text. When is it appropriate to cite my own work or self-cite? You know, oftentimes I feel like authors are, are trying to hide the fact that they've published something along the same lines right. even if this paper goes farther and, and I guess what I look for as an editor is whether they've actually cited the previous work and if I see that there are figures copied and I happen to find this previous piece of work and it's actually not cited in the thing that's been submitted I'm a lot more worried about it and the in truth I mean, one of the best ways to approach this is if you've already written another paper on this topic, say communication or whatever it might be, say something about it in your cover letter so that the editor has it in context from the outset.